and we welcome you to the 2021 Dick Hauser Trophy Announcement News Conference. I'm your host, Howard Borden. We're Zooming across America. We are normally in the press area at TD Ameritrade Park, but through this wonderful technology, we are thrilled to be with you this weekend as we celebrate, again, the announcement of our 2021 Dick Hauser Trophy winner. And right now, I would like to introduce those that will be speaking here this morning on the committee. We will have, again, with us, Jana Hauser Stevenson, the daughter of Dick Hauser. We will have the executive director of the Dick Hauser Trophy Committee, David Feaster. We'll have the executive director of the National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association, Bo Carter, and other guests as well this morning, including Tommy Allison, vice president of the Game Headwear, uh, the major sponsor of our wonderful event. Again, we're glad you're with us. We wish everybody a great time in Omaha and around the country watching the game we love so much. After a year off, we've got great eight elite teams. It's the Father's Day weekend. We're one big happy family, and we're glad that you are with us. With that said, I would like to introduce right now the executive director of the Dick Hauser Trophy Committee, David Feaster, to talk about the history of this prestigious award. Thank you, Howard. Uh, Mr. Baseball in the Omaha. So it, it's wonderful to have you, Howard. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to acknowledge um, the passing of Russ Anderson, our dear friend and committee member. Um, Russ worked with the Dick Hauser Trophy for 23 years. And Russ was instrumental in our success and moving our presentation to Omaha and are working closely with the NCAA. Russ was the Associate Commissioner of Conference USA. So um, a dear friend and a true professional. Uh, we will miss him. A uh, little bit about the Dick Hauser Trophy for those of you who are not familiar with it. Uh, the trophy was established in St. Petersburg, Florida in 1988, shortly after Dick's death. Um, we're now in our 35th year, and we've been presenting in Omaha at the College World Series since 92. Again, a little history. This award was started to be presented at the Governor's Baseball Dinner that was held in St. Petersburg. The Commissioner of Baseball would invite all of baseball uh, for spring training to come to this banquet. And that's where we presented it. Well, I think as we're all familiar, everybody doesn't train in uh, Florida anymore. So that, that dinner no longer exists, but that was its origin. And I will also tell you, we are so pleased to be associated with Game Headwear. Uh, they are one of the leaders in their industry and they are big supporters of college baseball. Uh, they're stepping up in a big way, and this is another way for them to support college athletics. A little bit about Dick Hauser. Dick was a two-time All-American shortstop at Florida State, 57 and 58, and he played eight years in the majors with the A's, Indians, and Yankees. Coached third base for Steinbrenner's Yankees before returning to coach at FSU in 1979. He managed the Yankees in 1980 and then Kansas City Royals from 1981 until his death in 87. And uh, we're all familiar, his 1985 Royals won the World Series. So the Dick Hauser Trophy honors the nation's collegiate baseball player who best demonstrates Dick Hauser's many outstanding attributes. Obviously, baseball performance. But we're also looking at a good student athlete, leadership on and off the field, moral character and courage. And we are very proud that we not only look at performance on the field, but also other attributes of today's student athlete. Um, we're also very proud of our effort to promote college baseball. We do an on-campus presentation, uh, which are always well received by the player and coach. And again, another way to promote college baseball. Since 1999, we've been associated 
with the College Baseball Writers Association to do our selection. We feel we have the highest level of integrity to our, our award selection pro process. These folks not know how to pick outstanding college players. And as you'll hear, uh, we have a grassroots selection process, which Bo's going to talk about. And these are the people that are watching the games. These are people that are watching the players, uh, not just one person in a cubicle making the selection. And Bo will go again into that. So we're very proud of that, of the integrity of the award. Another thing that's critical to understand, we are not picking the best pro prospect. That's not our award. Our award is the best college player that year. Obviously, many of them, as our winner this year, are going to go on to professional success, but our award isn't based on that. Um, many of our winners have gone on to major league success. I'm going to go through a few. Uh, Jason Veritek, Mark Deshura of Georgia Tech, Red Sox and Yankees, Todd Helton of Tennessee, Colorado, Steven Strasburg, San Diego State, now with Washington. Um, Two FSU grads, Buster Posey and J.D. Drew, who were part of Mike Martin's 2000 wins. Chris Bryant of San Diego on the Cubs. David Price with the Dodgers. Um, but most importantly, of Vanderbilt, Bo's alma mater. Andrew Benatendi, who uh, Kevin's familiar with. Um, an Arkansas grad and Brady Singer of Florida, both with the Royals. So we truly feel we're the Heisman Trophy of college baseball, and these folks do an excellent selection process. So back to you, Howard. Thanks a lot, David, for your information regarding this prestigious award. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to stepping up to the plate next, the executive director of the uh, National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association to talk about the process and introduce the final of the 2021 Hauser Trophy. Here's Bo Carter. Thank you, Howard. We're really honored to have everybody with us today. Especially want to thank Tommy Allison, the game headwear. Echo David's statements about Russ Anderson, one of the all-time great people, uh, our longtime treasurer. Uh, the Wilbur Snip Award is presented to a, a great writer, a great baseball personality every year, will now be called the Russell D. Anderson Wilbur Snip Award. So we were very uh, happy to honor the great late, late great Russell Anderson. I'd like to give you just a very quick overview about the voting process. It starts with the preseason NCBWA All America team in December and January before each season. Then there's a two ballot uh, voting process that goes down to, uh, on the second ballot. We actually identify Hauser Trophy finalists and do uh, with a group of almost 300 baseball writers, PR people, and uh, associated people with college baseball who vote on this trophy. So as David mentioned, it's, it's probably the most democratic of all the uh, baseball awards. And I feel very uh, honored to be back uh, with you again. The five finalists this year were Jace uh, Young of Texas Tech, Kevin Copps of Arkansas, and we're familiar with here, Jack Leiter and Kumar Rocker of Vanderbilt, and Matthew Nelson of uh, Mike Martin's alma mater, Florida, uh, Florida State, and two other awards that will not be presented, but will be sent to you uh, electronically this morning. Uh, Tony Vitello of Tennessee has been named the inaugural Mike Martin NCBWA Coach of the Year, and the stop reviewer is a young man named Kevin Copps. So uh, it's going to be quite a day for Kevin Copps, as we'll see in a moment. But I uh, want again, want to thank our committee, our sponsor, the Game Headwear, and all of you who are on the call today for being with us. Back to Howard. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Bo. And now, ladies and gentlemen, stepping up to the plate, again, the Vice President of the Game Headwear, our sponsor of the Dick Hauser Trophy Award. Let's have a nice morning welcome to Tommy Allison.
Tommy, I think you were on mute there. Would you mind uh, repeating that again, sir? Yes. Uh, thank you again, Howard. It is such an honor to be a part of the Dick Hauser Trophy and the Hauser family. On behalf of all of our team members at the game, I want to congratulate Kevin on such a great season. Kevin, you represent everything that this award stands for on and off the field. Best wishes to you in your future, and we look forward to following your progress. Again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, Tommy Allison with the game headwear. So I would like to introduce now Jana Hauser Stevenson, Dick Hauser's daughter, for the presentation on behalf of her sister, Jill, and her father, Dick Hauser, of the 34th annual Dick Hauser Trophy Award. Now stepping up to the batter's box, here is Jana Hauser Stevenson. Hi, everyone. First, thank you to Howard Borden, our Dick Hauser Trophy Committee members, our NCBWA National Membership of Voters, and to Tommy Allison, representing the game Headwear, our presenting sponsor. Thank you to the NCAA, conferences and schools for their collaboration, the outstanding assistance of Kevin Trainer at the University of Arkansas Athletics and to the MLB Network and MLB Advanced Media for their excellent work with Dick Hauser Trophy announcements and platforms. This year, for the first time in many years, the Dick Hauser Trophy Committee is without the NCBWAs and Conference USA's Russ Anderson. I also want to acknowledge that we miss him we miss his presence and his longtime commitment to collegiate athletics. Every college baseball coach, player, and fan hoped that we would bring a full season this year, which so thankfully has come to fruition. And as the chapters of this new season began in February, we then watched and awaited the statistics and performances that would define excellence this year. Inevitably, performances began to stand out. The 2021 season brought about new adjustments. College student athletes were granted an additional season due to the loss of last year's. And with that opportunity of another season came the ability to advance academically. My father, Dick Hauser, felt that he was just so fortunate for what his own college baseball experience at Florida State University gave to him. An education, lifelong friends, his baseball playing, coaching, and managing career in this great game. And to this day, people regard their fondness of him to my sister Jill and me, which means everything to us. We often wonder how he would have gone about this of all years in baseball. Work hard, stay focused, and above all else, affect, affect what he could in the best of ways. That is the spirit of who my father was. This year's Hauser Trophy SEBI finalists and finalists all embody those characteristics. Congratulations to each of you. The four cornerstones of the Dick Hauser Trophy are courage, character, leadership and performance, both on the field and off. A Dick Hauser Trophy recipient embodies those qualities of the four cornerstones, plus a season, season performance that is second to none the courage and character to stay in top shape while recuperating from Tommy John surgery and not only coming back, but improving pitches, to perform academically and graduate with a biomedical engineering degree in May of 2020 and commence graduate studies towards an MBA. And all along the way, he was acknowledged for his leadership as recognized by his teammates several times having been voted a team captain. We know our father would be so proud of you. We all are. On behalf of each of us here, and my twin sister, Jill, her daughters, Melody and Michelle, and my husband, Coach Gene Stevenson, we wish to extend our heartfelt congratulations to a most deserving and worthy recipient, 
the 2021 winner of the Dick Hauser Trophy, along with his head coach, Dave Van Horn, his parents, Rick and Michelle, and his sister, Ashley. Congratulations to pitcher Kevin Copps, the University of Arkansas. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Um, um, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Mrs. Hauser and the committee and God and Coach Van Horn and uh, my family and teammates um, just for all the support and guidance they've given me over the years. Uh, I would not be anywhere close to here without them. We would like also to congratulate uh, the head coach of Arkansas, head baseball coach, Dave Van Horn. And uh, Dave has a few remarks as uh, well regarding uh, Kevin. Welcome aboard uh, again, David. Well, what an honor to be here, honestly. Uh, Kevin's been unbelievable uh, for our team such a great leader on and off the field. And uh, his performance this year was something that I've never really witnessed. Um, first off, him coming back from injury a couple of years ago to <laughs> win an award after award, uh, so dependable, uh, great in the clubhouse, just, uh, just uh, I don't know, a pleasure to be around. I don't think I'll ever witness this again. Uh, it's, it's so rare to see a pitcher that can close a game, come in the middle of the game, start a game, uh, pitch back-to-back -back days, and we had to fight him to get off the mound half the time. So uh, I just feel very fortunate, uh, and I know the other coaches feel the same way to have had the opportunity to be around Kevin and coach him and hang out with him over the last five years. Again, we congratulate Kevin Cos to the University of Arkansas to be our 2021 Dick Hauser Trophy Award winner. And again, his head coach, David uh, Van Horn, with his uh, remarks. Now, we're going to have a Q&A as part of our press conference. We're going to conduct this uh, as part of our Zoom conference. We ask that everyone uh, in attendance keep your lines muted at all times. Media wanting to ask a question are asked to use their raised hand feature on the bottom of the Zoom screen. Once you are called on to ask a question, your audio will then be turned on. You'll be introduced by name in the order that you raised your hand. Once you are acknowledged, you need to introduce yourself and what organization you are with before you ask a question. If you ask a question, you need to state if you're planning to ask a two-part and whether your question is directed to Kevin or to Coach Van Horn or both. So we are very glad that media people are with us today. And I guess leading off for us to ask the first question will be T. Murphy. I do not know if that's Tim or Tom, but Mr. Murphy, welcome aboard this morning. Thank you, Howard. And it's Tom and I'm batting in the nine hole, not, not leading off. Um, <laughs> this question is for Kevin and I'm with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Kevin, uh, if, if there's a way to put your season in perspective uh, from having given up a run in the first game, but then to do what you did uh, after all that, how did, how did that feel? Uh, to be honest, I don't really think about the season like that. I kind of think about like the years uh, before that and kind of the work that went into, uh, into uh, those years. Um, but it's kind of weird looking back on the season and um, starting off like that and having a conversation with Coach Hobbs of, not freaking out a little bit, but like wanting to, to stop the bleeding from last year, but. All right. And then just the pitch, um, it, it had to be more than just a pitch. Can you talk about what, what it meant and, and your, your, maybe your confidence that you developed from being able to throw something that people had such trouble hitting? Uh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've always worked on, uh, my cutter, uh, but I think confidence was the biggest thing this year. I started working on that a lot in the summer and just like uh, starting to appreciate who I am versus looking at things I didn't like about myself. Thank you, Tom, for your pertinent questions. We welcome Andrew Hutchinson. Good morning, Andrew. 
Good morning. This is uh, Andrew Hutchinson with hogbeat.com. Dave, I was wondering, you know, you and, and Coach Hobbs have been pretty open, you know, all along that, that you thought Kevin was going to be a lot better this year. Was there a moment maybe during the season where you thought that not only was he going to be a lot better, that, that he'd be in the midst of a, a season as special as he had this year? Well, we started, you know, I've mentioned this many a time in the fall. Uh, we knew that Kevin was a lot better and, you know, standing near a dugout during scrimmages and hearing hitters come back and kind of mumbling to themselves, saying things like, man, I can't stand hitting off Kevin. And we kind of knew that we had something going there. And, uh, you know, early, early winter, January, February workouts, uh, you could tell it was going to be pretty good. You know, yeah, he might have given up a run against a really good team early. Uh, but but we had a lot of confidence in him. I mean, that was many, many games ago to really maybe point to one. Uh, we just saw after a few outings that we could give Kevin the ball and this game might be over. And, you know, I can't really say which which game that was, but but we knew we had something special. And you could tell when Kevin came in the game, it seemed like our team, especially when they were in the field defensively, they were uh, – they were on a high alert that he was going to throw it over the plate. If they happened to hit it, uh, they were going to field it for him. And it just seemed like we scored runs when he was, you know, uh, on the mound as well. Many a time we'd bring him in down a run or two and we'd end up winning. And uh, it was just a different feeling with Kevin on the mound. And then also for Kevin, uh, I know I, I heard an interview you did, I think it was at the Hog Pod, where there was, you know, conversations with you and Coach Hobbs about whether or not you're going to come back this year. What, what were those conversations like? And did you strongly consider not coming back? Or was it all just a matter of, hey, if, if Arkansas wants me back, I'm, I'm going to come back and give this another shot? Uh, it was it was whether or not Arkansas wanted me back and I was going to come back. But uh, just after the season, I was just kind of unsure of who I am and if uh, if they wanted me back uh, or if they, needed, they wanted to make room for some younger guys. So I was just trying to make that decision in the summer. And um, – Coach Hobbs thought it was stupid of me to ask. So, uh, and I'm, I'm really thankful for that. We thank uh, Andrew for his uh, questions. We welcome uh, this morning, Michael Coker. Hello uh, to the National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association. And uh, uh, Kevin, what, uh, what changes or what, what was it like to, after COVID to come into the 2021 season, did you do anything special? Um, I started to focus on uh, recovery and uh, what I put in my body a lot more. I kind of always had focused on that, but like starting in the summer after that season, I really started to uh, thin myself out and get myself into a lot better shape and really focus on stamina for myself because it's something I always struggle with after surgery. So I really pushed hard through that um, to make sure I was ready for the season. Thank you very much. A follow-up question from Tom Murphy. Yeah, this is for Kevin and coach. Kevin, you had a stretch of 28 innings that you didn't allow a run. What was that like going through and do you really since like the magnitude of, of your ERA and your whip this year? Uh, no, I don't, I don't really <laughs> sense the magnitude of it, to be honest. Um, I actually didn't know I did that till someone told me I re really during the season, I didn't pay attention to my stats or anything at all. I didn't, I didn't really like to, I've never really liked to, but it's, it's hard when people keep reminding you of it. And then the Follow same question, question yeah. from and, oh, well, yeah, the question me. for Dave too. The the, the magnitude, you, you know what it means. Twenty eight innings scoreless and, and and his whip this season. Well, I remember I, I didn't realize it at the time either, but I started hearing some guys talk about it in the dugout, and uh, all is from a coach's, I guess, perspective. We just knew that every time we put Kevin in there for a while, nobody was scoring. And he wasn't giving up very many hits. And I, we would we would talk after the games, you know, amongst ourselves about, you know, how consistent he was and um, just the fact that 
we have so much confidence in him, but yeah, I mean, that, th those are amazing numbers. I mean, you go, you go five or six innings without giving up a run. That's good. When you're talking almost 30 innings and who knows how many times that different appearances that was uh, because he was a reliever. Uh, it was amazing. Follow-up question now from Andrew Hutchinson. Yeah, Kevin, I, I know you're going to give Pro Ball a shot and, and everything, but w with a biomedical engineering degree and your work on your MBA, what what do uh, what are you wanting to do uh, in life after baseball? Uh, honestly, I've been really interested in like uh, prosthetics or. Um, I know that people have tried making artificial UCLs and ACLs, but they haven't really worked out. So th those are the kind of two fields that I'm uh, interested in and would like to pursue after baseball. Question now, we welcome Matt Jones. Hey, this is Matt Jones, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Uh, Dave, this is for you. You've had two players win this award, Kevin and Andrew Benintendi. Are there any characteristic similarities that you saw between them during their years that they won the award? Well, we only had Andrew for two years. He was draft eligible after his sophomore year. I would say the thing that I could compare, I mean, you have a pitcher and you have position players that they both struggled. You know, Andrew, you know, came to the University of Arkansas uh, and had set all kinds of records in the state of Ohio in high school baseball. Might have been the, you know, had the most hits ever by a high school player up there in the sport of baseball. Um, but his his freshman year, Andrew struggled. Uh, he broke his handmate bone, uh, batting average slipped. Uh, he wasn't having any fun. Team struggled for a while early. Um, and then he, he, he came to me after the season, he was supposed to go play summer ball. And I just said, Hey, you know what you need to do? You need to head home. You need to get you a trainer. If you can't handle it yourself, you need to get stronger. You need to get healthy. And that's what he did. And he came back and in the fall, we were amazed. We we're like, we hadn't recruited a center fielder for the future, honestly. Uh, and we about a week into fall ball, we said, we got to get us a center fielder for next year. This guy's not going to be back. Kevin kind of the same way, you know, struggled here and there, fought through it. And then in the falls, different player and uh, credit to both of them, uh, you know, with, with the way they work. Um, and their mentality. So that, that would probably be the thing that I would use that they, they had in common. And then I had a question uh, for, for both of you. Kevin came in with the class with Isaiah Campbell, Blaine Knight, a lot of guys who were really crucial to, to your success the last several years. Uh, kind of as you look back on that class, what are your thoughts about that class and what they've meant to your program? And then Kevin, for you, uh, you know, part of being in that class. We knew that was a good class. We thought it was a, a pitcher heavy class and, um, some guys were going to, you know, really perform during their time here at Arkansas. Uh, you just never know how long it's going to take. Injuries play a part in that. But uh, what, a, what a super class and, and, and what a bunch of good people. Really fun to coach. Um, being a part of that class, I mean, I, I love all those guys and I'm kind of looking forward to seeing them again. Um, um, I've made some uh, lifelong friends in uh, that class, and I think it's <clears throat> amazing that how many of them were able to stay at Arkansas and get drafted just out of that uh, single class. Now stepping into the batter's box, Pig Trail Nation. Hey, Kevin, Nick Petroccioni and Pig Trail Nation. Earlier in the in the ceremony, we heard all of those names of the recipients of this award, like David Price, Chris Bryant, Steven Strasburg, to be able to be named along with all of these great players in, in baseball. What does that mean? I mean, like I said earlier, it just it doesn't really feel real yet. Um, those are the guys you kind of watch when you're younger and look up to and uh, to be on the same list with them is uh, is a blessing. We thank you very much for those uh, remarks. Now we welcome Jordan Black. Hey, this is Jordan Black with 4029 in Northwest Arkansas. Kevin, congrats. Question for both you and coach. Is there a particular moment that sticks out from this season 
whether it was a time you were on the mound or just a, a moment from the season that maybe we didn't as media get a glimpse of something really special that sticks out, uh, Kevin and then coach as well, if you would. Um, to me, what sticks out to me the most is before the season and one of my bullpens, Coach Hobbs was showing me uh, one of my overlays and he told me that um, he told me that I was going to be an uh, All-American um, and uh, I, his belief in me and the confidence that I got from that, I think, really helped me through the season. We have a, a follow up question from Michael Coker. Uh, Michael Coker, Black College Nines, HBCU Baseball. Uh, what, what were your eating habits like? Was for future stars to follow your footsteps? Did you, how did you train? How was your eating habits? Did you eat any special meals? That, were you uh, heavy into nutrition? Uh, for that, I'm really thankful for my uh, family to be able to support me in that way. Uh, I would go to um, Whole Foods all the time. They have these pre-made meals. Um, one I would eat, I mean, every day, um, uh, it would be, I'd get blackberries and they have a pre-made meal that's chicken, green beans and sweet potatoes. And then I'd eat a peanut butter sandwich after that, um, just to, uh, keep my body up. And I think that made a, a really big uh, difference in, um, in how I performed. And the way I thought about it was like, uh, like eating for performance versus like, for enjoyment, I guess. Do we have any other questions uh, this morning for uh, Kevin or Dave? I How have one for, for both for both of them, actually, before we sign off. Uh, Kevin, uh, from uh, your high school days into college days, what does it mean, the, the growth that you've had uh, as a student athlete on and off the field and Dave, from your perspective, seeing this young man grow has to be really a, a, a very good thing for you to feel about as far as where he's been in his future coming up. I think uh, baseball as a whole and, and the leadership from Coach Van Horn and uh, my coaches has uh, grown me as a man, um, especially, and has taught me a lot of uh, life lessons and how to work through a lot of things. And it, it, it for sure carries over into life. Um, a lot so uh in that aspect I, i'm very grateful obviously a big part of our jobs is is coaches at this level is to develop these guys uh, obviously on the baseball field but but away for from the baseball field and for their futures and Ke kevin was uh when he came in um we knew he was such a good student and such a good person we weren't gonna have to worry about him at all as far as keeping an eye on him. He was going to take care of business both on and off the field. Uh, you know, he was uh, looking back, he was a lot skinnier and like all of them looked very, very young and uh, always smiling. Uh, I think the players always gravitated to him and, and uh, it was mentioned earlier, but you know, here's a guy that's been voted team captain like three times. Um, and the first couple of times he was voted team captain and maybe even he would say going into this year, he was just another guy on the team. Uh, he wasn't a star yet. Uh, he was just a hard worker and a good person. And, and uh, you know, that, that's, why they, that's why they gravitated to him. That's why they voted for him because he was such a good leader without being verbal, without, you know, challenging people in their face to do it his way, uh, just by example. But uh, what a pleasure to watch him grow up here, so to speak, over the last five years and do what he's done. And, and someone said earlier something about what are you going to do after baseball? Uh, he's going to do whatever he wants and he'll be really good at it. Um, but I think he's going to play baseball for as long as he wants as well. We have Sean Kernahan that's been patiently waiting to ask some questions. Good morning, Sean. Thanks, Sean Kernahan here, three quarter slot. Kevin, what is the what does the schedule look like between now and the draft as you get ready for the next step in your baseball career? Uh, I'll, I'll just be at Arkansas, lifting and throwing, and just uh, waiting to see how that goes. Well, we uh, 
I believe I had our final uh, questions and answers there. And we thank, of course, everybody for participating. This concludes our 2021 Dick Hauser Trophy Award presentation. Again, we are so glad that you've Zoomed with us from around the country. We would like to thank the Dick Hauser Trophy Committee, the National Collegiate Baseball Board of Directors, the Ar Arkansas Department of Athletics, Director of Athletics, Hunter Juracek, Coach Dave Van Horn, Senior Associate Director of Athletics, Kevin Trainer, Baseball SID, Oliver Grigg, also with the Game Headwear, Vice President Tommy Allison. We also want to thank special help from Mike Montoro, Malcolm Gregg, Joe Mitchin, and everybody that helped make this Zoom go very smoothly. We hope that you have a great Father's Day weekend. We hope you enjoy the brilliant Shining Diamond if you are in Omaha at TD Ameritrade Park or watching the games. And again, thank you very much. Good morning. So long, everybody, and bye-bye.